Yeah. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Bible Thumper Logic Colleges, get your scriptures, get your swords out. We're going in. We're going in. We're going in. Today's message is going to be angels and stars. Like I said before, there's, I, I guess it's not really a debate, but people just don't really know how to figure out Genesis 6. Let's turn our Bibles to Genesis 6. In Genesis 6, come on, Bible Pump Logic, how to get out to you. Dust the, knock the dust off those swords. Let's go in. Let's do some reading. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wise of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men. Mm, mm, mm. It said, let me go down and chapter verse five. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of thoughts of his heart was evil continually. Man. Let's go up to chapter four. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bear children, giants. Your other Bibles call it Nephilim. A lot of people don't want to deal with that because Nephilim, the result of angels, fallen angels, and daughters of women. How in the world does that happen? Well, there's two possibilities. Men were possessed by devils or, or fallen angels. Or fallen angels transformed into men and made it with or wide, wifey duck, daughters of men. And the end result was the Nephilim, the sons of God, the men of be known, the giants. Now, there's no debate in anybody when you, well, if you're into the Ethiopian canon or any canon or any believer that believes that the book of Enoch is legit, which I do believe, one, one Enoch. And the translation I rock with is the R.H. Charles translation. I'm sure there's better ones, but that's a very reputable one. <clears throat> the Ethiopians have one of the oldest Bibles in the world. And the book of Enoch is right up in that camp. So um, you, you won't even be deb debating whether it is. They give the names of the angels and, and everything and even say they transform themselves the whole night. There's no, you leave no doubt about what this is. But I got another aspect of this, whether this was angels or men. Let's go to uh, the book of Jude, shall we? Bible Bible Logic College, just flip all the way to the back and to those new Bible Logic, Bible Logic College, a little bit Go to the book of Revelations, it's right before the book of Revelations. Bible Thumper Logic College, that's the word. <laughs> Go to the book of Revelations, go to Revelations 1, and then go right before Revelations 1, and you're going to get the book of Jude. Don't be scared of these scriptures. They're good for you. They're good for you. Unless you have the spirit of the Antichrist, then it's not going to be good for you. You're not going to read this now. <laughs> you're going to hate, hate the Bible. All right, so <clears throat> in the book of Jude, the general epistle of Jude, we can... Chop down to the verse four. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into the sinlessness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed them that believeth not. <laughs> now look at this. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He hath reserved an everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. You know that's not talking about no regular men. In the Greek, that word is angelus, angelus, or something like that. It, I mean, the English transliteration of it is angelus. 
And sometimes that does refer to men, like in Revelation 1, when they say the angel to the church of Thyatira, uh, Philadelphia, Smyrna, the pastor, the leader. But in this case, there ain't no men chained up in no darkness waiting for the great judgment day. And left their first estate. What first estate did men leave? The angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. The habitation of these angels was not the Garden of Eden. The habitation of these angels was not the land of Nod or wherever you want to place these angels. These angels' habitation were the host of heaven. And the Bible tells us not to worship the host of heaven, good or bad, fallen or those who stayed in their proper places. Now, check it out. We're going to continue to go on. If you roll on and you go, it talks about Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and then it talks, and, and then it goes into the the angels, the righteous angels. It says, likewise, also these filthy dreams of the flesh despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael, the archangel. Now, Michael ain't no man. Michael is one of the angels in the Bible. Another one that we, we hear about is Gabriel. But it says the ark, in verse 9, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, <clears throat> durst not bring against him a railing accusation to say the Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which thou know not, but thou know naturally as brute beasts and those things that corrupt themselves. Now, if you go down to verse 13, look what it says. Oh, let's go to 12. The, um, these are spots in your feast of charity when they feast, but then you feed themselves without fear of clouds. They are without water, carried about by winds. Come on, come on. Trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, flaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. They're going over to the same thing. And right after that, it said the wandering stars reserved in, in um, blackness of darkness forever. Talk about the same thing he's talking about over here in verse 6. And the angels which kept not the first estate, but left their own habitation, they have reserved an everlasting change under the darkness. Same thing, everlasting stars, angels. Stars, angels. Right after this reference to stars and equating those with those angels, or, could, or you being able to connect them like a key, that the stars in the host of heaven are the angels, Verse 4, the very verse, next verse. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these sayings. Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of the saints to execute judgment upon all <clears throat> and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which the ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own flesh and their mouths speaking great swelling words, having men's purses in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, so after you receive a key about stars and angels and angels and stars in, re in reference to Genesis 6 about leaving the habitation, which is the um, heaven, right underneath the firmament, as in per Genesis 1, when the sun, moon, and stars were created on the fourth day of creation, whatever that means. Then you have Enoch proof prophesying. Where is this prophecy located? It's not located in this modern day version. This is a modern version of the King James Bible. You have to go <clears throat> or come across the book of Enoch. In the book of Enoch, you will see the exact prophecy in the book of Enoch. In fact, it's in the first chapter. The very first chapter of the Enoch book of one. 
And the thing about Enoch, there is no question about these angels, just like the planets. Let's, let's, let's dig in. Let's dig in. Who called Jupiter, Venus, and Mars planets? The Bible didn't call it that. These very terms and things work directly against God's creation story, which called them sun, moon, and stars. These, what we call planets, are celestial bodies. And then on top, all the celestial bodies are named after Roman and Greek gods and goddesses. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Pluto, Neptune. Pluto not even in the club no more. But look what one of the, look what one of the terms, wandering stars. That that that's even in the book of Enoch. It is not exactly like that, but they named these planets, they named these planets wandering. Well, no, I'm saying that wandering stars is what the name is in the book of Jude. And it's related to angels, wandering stars. So you have a situation with science or scientists renaming things and, and differentiating between. Because remember, what they're trying to say is that the planets, including the Earth, the earth was thrust amongst these celestial bodies that we call planets and are said to be revolving around the sun. When in fact, the sun and the moon and the rest of the celestial bodies, not the earth or heaven, the throne of God and the footstool of God are not moving at all. The Lord said, God said, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Just, just imagine the North Pole, <clears throat> Polaris, the star Polaris and all of that. The throne of God in heaven and not <clears throat> these things being stationary. Everything else revolving around it. So all the planets along with the stars and the moon and the sun revolve around the North Star or Polaris. All of that makes sense. What don't make sense is the earth spinning and rotating, and yet the book of Enoch and the scriptures that we hold dear to our heart in the 66 books have a foundation. The book of Enoch goes even farther, talks about the, the chief cornerstone, laying the chief corner. What kind of chief cornerstone is on something that's spinning and revolving? Where is heaven at? I know heaven is a spiritual place. But still, <clears> that kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The new Jerusalem is going to come down out of heaven. What's going to come down to on a spinning earth? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And you cannot find not too much information on scientific studies as far as experiments like Tesla used to do to prove, not that the earth has a curve, but to, to prove the flatness. With simple telescopes, simple um, um, sats, not satellites, what's it binoculars, you know, zoom lenses, all these things will prove that there is no curve. It's just that as things get further away, you can't see them. If, you're, if your partner walks down the street when it gets too far, you're not going to see it. Drive down the street, you're not going to see it no more. I don't care where you're at. Now, there is mountains, there are valleys, but on the overall thing, it's not a plane. It's, it's not a planet, it's a plane. <laughs> you understand? It's like that checkerboard and that Mason symbology. They got that checkerboard there, they got that sun over there, they got that moon over there. You like looking at it like, what? They got that eye up there, you like, man, what are they saying? They said just what you don't know. That checkerboard is the earth, the planet. Plane. <laughs> well, anyway, even if they don't, they're not saying it all. That's just what that is. I'm here to level the playing field. <laughs> so that you can see the light. 
I don't know you're tired of traveling and traveling and traveling and learning more and more and more and end up not knowing nothing, even to a higher level. It's ridiculous. But that's what programming does. If I take you from pre-K-4 all the way to the 12th grade, making you make models of a solar system with the sun in the middle, and it's all based on theory. If a theory is not true, then what is that theory? It's a lie. This, the Big Bang Theory has never been proven. You say, well, the Word of God has not been proven either. Well, the thing about the Word of God is that the Spirit of God has proven itself to many, many women. That's where the faith thing comes in. We walk by faith and not by sight. But the only thing about this faith walk is that he changes our lives. <laughs> faith in Yeshua HaMashiach changes our lives. And he gives us insight and he gives us this thing called revelation. Dreams, visions, open visions, revelations in his word. And the, and the word begins to open up to you. So not that you go outside of this. Everything you need really is in the 66. Because salvation can be found in this. Salvation really can be found in praying to the Most High. If if our people will call on the names, will humble themselves, seek my face and pray, turn from the wicked ways. If you turn from you, if you repent, you can receive the gift of the Spirit. Be baptized in the name of Jesus and receive the gifts of the Spirit. The gift of the Spirit is salvation. Be filled with the Spirit. And that Spirit is the Spirit of truth, which will lead to all truth. You're believing you're delusional because somebody told you that the book of Enoch is the devil, that the Apocrypha is the devil. So you scared of the devil, but that ain't the devil. The devil is Satan, your enemy, your adversary who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But this knowledge, nah, this knowledge is <clears throat> to be tested to see whether it goes against these scriptures that you have. And it doesn't. The Apocrypha is a part of the original 1611 Bible. And Esther and all this stuff. This stuff is good knowledge. Good teaching. But the churches are caught up in the same program that the world is caught up in. Not all the churches. Not all the believers. But we have a bunch of delusional reprobate people in the earth realm. Will everybody wake up? No, they will not. No, they will not. But understand that um, you don't have no time to be wasting and playing around and getting tied up into no wicked, wicked um, oaths, knowledgeable or unknowledgeable about it. The Bible said that your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Anything else is coming from the wicked one, Satan. Satan got oaths. In the book of Enoch, the angels that fell, they made an oath with each other. They bound themselves up by an oath. This is one of the OG oaths. You understand what I'm saying? And it's not a good one. You know? So the, the original pact of secret society was the fallen angels. According to the book of Enoch. I advise you to go read it. If you know how to read. If you're scared, say you're scared. You know what I'm saying? And if, and if you believe that the book of Enoch is demonic, let me hear why. Let me hear why it's demonic. Who, who, who wrote it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't tell who did this, that, and the other. Pray about it. Why don't you pray about it, about the book of Enoch? And I ain't talking about Enochian and magic. I'm talking about the book of Enoch. Let me hear somebody get an answer for prayer. And, and I'm talking about what's in scripture. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm just coming to your feelings, your emotions. Because your emotions is based upon you being brainwashed and programmed ever since you've been a baby to believe the Big Bang Theory and the Theory of Evolution in America, we have been programmed. And when you wake up from the program, you are the devil. But God, 